Hello amazing leaders and welcome to day 57 of the amazing 90 day challenge. I can't believe that we're almost two thirds of the way through already. So how are you getting on with your challenge? What are you doing? Have you started something yet? Are you listening to these first before you commit to starting something yourself? Whatever it is that you might want to do or that you're already doing, I really encourage you to keep going. No matter what stage you're at, it's really essential that you just keep going one foot in front of the other and you'll be there by before you know it by the end. So uh, that'd be great. Today we're going to continue our Habits to Master mini-series. We've just got a few more to go. Uh, yesterday was a little interruption with uh, Izzy's birthday message, <clears throat> my lessons from my 12-year-old. And today's topic is Troubles Ahead. So <clears throat> somebody once old told me that in leadership, you never get two good days in a row. So if you're having a good day, enjoy it because tomorrow something will happen that will throw you offline a little bit and you'll have to get yourself back on course. Also, I love this quote and you've heard me say it before from John C. Maxwell that all, all amazing leaders, I added it in the amazing bit, but all amazing leaders see more than others and before others. And hopefully the more you repeat that, the more that sinks in. It's not the most easiest of sentences to understand at first, but once you do, once you grasp it, then you realize that that's what actually happens. And that's the difference between people in leaders, leadership um, and others around them as well. So I'm just going to ask you some questions. I want to give you some time to think about the answers whilst we're going through this podcast or through this social media video, depending on where you're listening to it. How do you react personally to a problem? Now, do you react differently if the problem is of a personal nature, something to do at home, or if it's of a business nature? something to do in your work or your organization. Maybe it's not something you've actually dealt with personally, but it's something that if you're in a position of leadership, <clears throat> you know it's gonna affect you somehow. And how do you react? Because your reaction says a lot about you and it sends a big message out to the people around you as to how big this problem is. So it's really important to know how you react so that you can then um, make sure that that's in line with how big the problem is. There's this phrase, don't turn a mountain into from a molehill, you know, don't turn a mountain out of a molehill. So when it's small, when there's a molehill forming, it's not a mountain yet, you don't need to react like it's the size of Everest if it's just a small problem. But how you react and how you tackle that will actually give you some good answers and knowledge to how you're dealing with problems personally, but also how your team around you should deal with those same problems should they arise. If you react and overreact maybe to some problems, then just get prepared because the people around you are probably gonna do something similar. Whether that's a problem you've created or somebody else has created, if you want people around you overreacting, then you carry on overreacting. But if you want them to react appropriately to the size of the problem that they've got, then you've got to do the same as well. You've got to lead by example. So that's how you react. But when do you start to work on fixing them? There's the problem, there's a reaction, but then between those points and the next one is a time period of when you start working on fixing those problems, those troubles ahead. We all have them, no matter what it is. Like I said, whether it's in our personal life or in our business life, there will be problems. No two days are gonna be good days. So think about that and think about what are you doing in that time period between knowing the problem and fixing it or starting to work on fixing it. It may take a while to actually fix the problem, but that initial point where you say, right, this is where we started working on it, that's really important. What are you doing in that time? Are you thinking about it? Are you trying not to think about it? Are you procrastinating? Are you trying to get ideas and, and you know, do you need to sleep on it sometimes? All those things will happen in that gap and it's just what you, you know, what you do personally and how you react to it and when you start fixing the problems. Because that's again a message to other people. Do you see a problem and fix it straight away and then it may or may not work, or do you take time? Some people out there don't ever start fixing a the problem. They just keep waiting and waiting and hoping it will go away. Well, hope isn't a strategy. So you've got to start working on fixing it at some point. So again, Think about that. When you when was the last time you noticed a problem? When was the last time that you started working on that problem? How long was that? Could you measure it in minutes, hours, days, months, whatever it was? 
And what happened when you started working on fixing it? How did you feel? How did the others around you feel as well? Another lesson that we've also learned from Tim Peake, the astronaut, he said that when you have a problem, come up with multiple ways to fix it. And Tim recommended four different ways to fix a problem, four different answers, potential answers that you can come up with. And again, I want to use that method here and what we're trying to do when we've got troubles ahead. If we can come up with four different ways, then that would be a good way of working out, okay, here's our first reaction and here's our fourth reaction. And there's a couple in the middle as well. Not always our first reaction is the best and it might take us a little time to think about other ways that we can come up with better solutions. The other thing you can do <clears throat> is ask others for their ideas as well. Are you part of a mastermind group, a physical one or a virtual one? Do you have mentors around you, people that have walked the walk before you so that they can help you along your, your journey as well or coaches? Maybe you've got other team members around you that you can ask for their ideas and their help because more heads will come up with a better solution than just your one, trust me on that. So if you are part of those things, then use those. That's what they're there for. Put out the question, let them ask you some uh, points about that question to make sure they fully understand and then ask for their opinions on what they would do. It doesn't mean you have to do it and it might be that you've got different people in the group or different mentors that would tackle things in different ways. And you can piece together little golden nuggets from each of those to come up with the best solution possible, including your own ideas as well. Whatever it is out of any of those things that you do, you've got to pick something you can do and just start doing it. You can't just keep thinking about it forever. So pick something, pick an idea. You don't know whether that's gonna work or not, but you've got to start doing something and do it and go for it and see what happens. If it fixes the problem, great. If not, go back to the drawing board, look at those other ideas and options from other people, pick one of those and start doing that as well. But you can't sit back and do nothing. That's really poor leadership. It sends the message that you don't know what you're doing or that you don't know how to tackle this problem. The reality is you kind of don't know what the outcome is going to be, but you can start doing something about it and it may or may not work, that's okay, don't worry about that. It sends the message that we're gonna try something. There's a problem here, we don't know how to fix it yet, we're gonna try this and see if it works. If not, we'll try something else and we'll keep trying until the problem is fixed. Once you've done that and you have found the solution to that problem, then learn from it so that you can be better prepared in the future. I didn't say there that it will never happen again because that's unlikely. Some old problems do come back, sometimes they come back bigger than they were in the first time. But you've got to learn from it, learn from the telltale signs that got you there. Analyze how you got into this situation and what you can do to be better prepared in the future for you, your team, your family, whatever else it might be. And learn from those experiences. We learn the most when we're suffering and in pain than we do from the successes and the good times that we have. And lastly, I want you to set aside some time to think about what lies ahead so that you can become an even better predictor at facing these problems and tackling them because you're trying to get there even sooner than they happen in reality as well. So I hope that's helpful. I hope you'll have an amazing day and remember why be average when you can be amazing.